Welcome back. As promised, we have Melissa Tackett here from the EOD Warrior Foundation, and she's going to tell us all kinds of wonderful things that EOD Warrior Foundation is doing for us. Welcome. Well, thank you very much, Dave. I look forward to hearing about this, but tell the folks out there, what is the EOD Warrior Foundation? Well, to simplify it, uh, EOD in itself stands for Explosive Ordnance Disposal. And to, to make a, a, a really simple reference for you, I can say Hurt Locker. Yeah. And you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. We're the, we're the bomb squad of all branches of service throughout the military. So the EOD Warrior Foundation was implemented to um, render care and aid to our EOD, warrior, our EOD warriors throughout mm -hmm. the military. Certainly, certainly. And um, who does the EOD Warrior Foundation support and serve? The UD Warrior Foundation supports and serves all of our branches of service, Army, Navy, Air Force, and Marine Corps. Um, with all the military combined, 1% is actual EOD techs. Men and women alike, these people are their mothers, their fathers, their brothers and sisters and daughters, and they belong to somebody. And when they come back from, from war with casualties, we take care of the wounded and we take care of the fallen. We take care of the families too. And we definitely we? take care of the families, as Certainly. well as the memorial wall, which is here at Eglin. Yes, and it, you know, there's a, there's a wonderful steeped history there. Most folks don't know that all EOD uh, technicians get trained in the same place, actually overseen by the Navy, but, but taken care of by all four services. Yes. And it's kind of a, an interesting way to start. I uh, joined, my, joined the Air Force early on and was trained by the Navy and then ended up doing my last stint in the Air Force <laughs> with the Navy. And it's kind of, kind of a different career field, isn't it? Can't get rid of us. No, no, no. And we really do become family we because are. Uh, so, so few actually make it through the school that, that you, uh, you build lifelong friends. And, yes. Uh, yeah, it, yeah, I go to graduations every Friday and I tell the families, you are part of our family now and you right. will not ever get rid of us. You just, you can't. Now give the folks an idea. How, how do you support the, the wounded and the fallen and um, the families? Um, we'll do it individually. The wounded, when they come back from war or even in a, a training evolution, if they become wounded, we get initial contact. We get there as, as quickly as we can and we, we, we initiate a grant that will allow their family members to come and be with them because it's very important to have that support with them. Sure. And of course, we get there as quickly as we can as well so we can take care of whatever needs that they have. And then we also, we we give them an iPad because just as you said, we're a family and they just spent maybe six months to a year overseas with that tight knit unit mm -hmm. and that has become their immediate family and we don't like that separation. As soon as they get wounded, they get separated. So we, we try to keep that connection for them so they can maybe have FaceTime and just do messages or whatever it is they can do. So we, we keep that link for them. And for the fallen, we make an initial contact to the families yeah. and we're there to support the families and help them with with this major change that they just received and sure. and then of course the uh the fallen <coughs> their names get placed on the memorial every year we have our memorial weekend which is the first weekend of may and currently there are 298 names on the wall and they've been there since world war ii and we have four more to add on this year so this may we'll have a gathering and it, it's, it's a huge honor and, and also a very large responsibility, but that wall was moved not all that long ago from Indian Head, Maryland, where we were all our own little uh, peninsula out there in the Potomac <laughs> River down here. And um, I think that, that the communities really embraced that really well, have, haven't they? They have. Well, we have had the EOD school here for a short yeah. spell as well. It used to be completely up in Indian Head, and the wall was built up in Indian Head in 1969. And then in 1999, when the whole school was moved down here, they brought the wall with them. Yeah. And so we, we have the gates open. The community is always welcome to come out there. We have benches in place. People can sit and have a moment with their loved ones. And Well, it seems like all the things that you've listed, the iPads and the fallen and the grants and all that, uh, it seems like it would take a whole lot of money. How, how in the world do you... Uh are you financially supported? Well, we are a nonprofit. We are a private nonprofit, so we're not funded by any means of the government. We do receive grants, but the majority of our funding comes from donations and fundraisers. Mm -hmm. We have ambassadors throughout the United States, and a few of us are actually overseas at various duty stations. And every year, throughout the year, they put on events, just events that, that they want to put on for the EOD Warrior Foundation. Sure, and so they all generate generate income and money. And, yes. And this has been going on for quite a long time, hasn't it? Yes, it has. Yeah. Yes. 
Fantastic. The, um, the, let's go back to the wall just a minute because um, there's always a blurb in the paper. Um, a very uh, most folks don't even I think fully grasp what it means. But there's a blurb in the paper because once a year there's a special event at the wall, isn't there? Correct. The UD Warrior Weekend. Mm -hmm. Well, they call it the UD Memorial Weekend. Yeah, and it's that time when we um, put those names on the wall of all of the folks that have fallen um, in the line of duty doing EOD work, isn't uh, it? Yes, and we also read each name individually, and a lot of times families from prior fallen texts will come and just, just to be with that family unity again. Yeah. It's and a very emotional weekend, but very a very celebratory weekend because it celebrates life and love and family and friendship and our unity that we promise to never forget and always take care of one another. And if, if folks out there see that in the paper and they want an opportunity to come out and be involved, it would, that would be a wonderful weekend if you really want to get a feel for how family-like we are. That would be a, a great time to come out, um, be respectful, pay your respects to, uh, to those folks. For, for many, many years, the numbers on the names on the wall didn't grow very much, did they? They did not. And, and more recently, we're, we're seeing it just... Uh, it's heartbreaking to, to see the names that we have to put on sometimes. Yeah. We're very thankful that this year is a very low number, but previous years we've, we've had to put quite a few in one year. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, um, it's, a, uh, it's a very solemn, solemn time. And, uh, it is. Can't, can't help walk by that wall and get a little tear in my eye. I gotta yes. Tell you. <laughs> I, I maintain that wall, so I, yep. I talk to it. <laughs> what are some of the other ways that folks in the local area could be involved to help the EOD? Foundation. Well, as I'd mentioned, we have events going on throughout the United States. And even here in Niceville, we have three events coming up rather quickly. This weekend, we have the art and fashion show at the Emerald Coast Conference Center. And so we've welcomed people to walk the runway for us. And then we also have the EOD Memorial Challenge coming up. And the Emerald Coast Triathlon team is putting on a duathlon for our our foundation. So we have those three events coming up really quick and we're always looking for volunteers, always looking for participants and donations of course are always welcome. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. What a what a fantastic uh, uh, work that you're doing and uh, folks need to know you're EOD, aren't you? I was retired EOD, master tech as yourself yep. in uh, 2009 I retired Navy. And, and it's a uh, it really is a wonderful family. I, uh, I you, it's amazing where you run into old, old EOD buddies and uh, and the stories that come with those. <laughs> God bless them. Thank you very much for all that Thank you're doing you. for us. Tell the folks how do they get in touch with you if they would like to or would like some more information about the EOD. You can contact us through our website, the EODWarriorFoundation.org, and we have a list of all the events that are coming up. The recent ones close by. You can just link on any of those events and find us. There's. Um, a lot of different opportunities. You can purchase a brick to go into the memorial floor. You can purchase a flag that will be flown over the memorial itself. So there's many different avenues that individuals can take to participate in our foundation. Fantastic. Melissa, thank you for picking up the torch and I think you're doing a fantastic job. And I know that um, all of the EOD members of our uh, EOD community are enjoying the, the fruits of that labor. So look forward to uh, seeing you around the community. Definitely look forward to having you at the memorial this year. I'll be there. <laughs> God bless. <laughs> Stay tuned. We have next up uh, Rural Osley, and he's going to tell you all about the great things going on at Niceville United Methodist Church. So don't go away.